Hello everyone and welcome back to RV Boost. Have you ever been disappointed to find out that Revit does not detect rooms for your elements because your elements are in one model and the rooms that are in another one? Well, that's exactly the problem that we have solved here using RV Room Link. Let me quickly show you now how it works. I have here an example model where we have equipment and items. The rooms, they come from two Revit links. The first one is for the upper floor and the second one here for rooms on the lower floor. In this model, I only have equipment like furniture objects, plumbing fixtures, and so on. If we go to this schedule here and try to find the room information from Revit, for example, using the room name and number parameters there, I can see that they are empty simply because my elements are in this model, but the rooms are from the links. Let's fix this. Let's go to Add-ins. Under the RV Boost panel, I can run now RV Room Link. And here, there are only three simple steps we need to do to get the room information directly from the link into our current active model. Firstly, let's tell RV Room Link which rooms from which Revit links it should check. If I now go to here and choose a link name from there, firstly, the room file for level one. I then need to choose the face of the room from that Revit link. This is where I want to choose the face on which my rooms were created. Let me show you quickly if I go back to level one here. That's the Revit link. If I now select this room right now, I can see the face of it is working drawings. And that's the face I need to select. We can go back to RV room link, select working drawings from here. And then you can choose to include either rooms only on this phase or also all the other rooms that were created on the phases before this phase in this link. So if before working drawings, I have existing phase one and phase two, if I want to include rooms from all four phases from existing to working drawings, I will need to check this tick box here to include rooms from previous phases. Next step, let's do the same thing for the level two room link. I can quickly go to here and duplicate this link and then change the name to level two now. The face will be the same. Let's say working drawings here. I can also include even rooms from this active model. So if I now make a new link and change this to be equipment model 23, this model here, that's the same name there as you can see, I can select maybe new construction for the room face. So that's step number one done. We have specified the links and the room phases that our room link should check for existing rooms. Step number two down here is where we have to select which element in this active Revit model that we want to assign room data to. Firstly, let's go by category. I can say here, maybe casework. And after I've done that, I can go to this element parameter menu and select all the available parameters from objects of this category casework in my active model there. Let's say custom room name for now. It's a custom shape parameter, by the way. So you can use any parameters you have added to your objects in the model. It doesn't have to be the same one I'm using now. Next step, we need to also select, just like for the rooms, the face for the elements as well. So I can go to here and maybe choose new construction. If I want to also include elements from a previous phase, like existing here, I can still choose the latest phase here, but then check the box for include elements from previous phases. Works just like this one up here, but for elements in this model instead of for rooms from the links. Next up, I want to select the room parameter from the links that I want to copy data from because I want to get room name here for the elements in my model. Let's choose the name parameter of the linked rooms. The last option on this line is whether I want to override existing values or not. If I tick this box, let's say a casework object already has some room name under the custom room name parameter. When I check this box like this, that means RV room link will override the existing value in this parameter with the latest information from my Revit links. That's what this box means. Next step, let's do multiple parameters because room name may not be enough for now. I will need to have another one. So let's copy this link and then choose custom room number. And with this one, I want to get the value from the room number parameter. So let's choose room number here. Just like that. 
If you want to select multiple categories, not just one like this, we can do it too. Let's make another copy of this parameter link and choose all categories from here. It should be the one on top of this list. And when I do that, if I go to here, I can see a much longer list of parameter names. Before, we only have a few, like so. That's because we were checking just the case work category. But now, when I have all categories selected, this list here will give me all parameters from all categories in this model. So now, let's say I want to get the room area to maybe a common parameter of my elements in this model. Let's say COM here. And there we have comments. Just so when I look at one single item, I can see the area of the room that it belongs to. Let's do another one. If I go for floor finishes, let's choose floor from here. And for room, we can choose the floor finish parameter. In this case, I want to write the floor finish of the room to the comments parameter of the floor in this model. Of course, you can make your own custom parameter for your floors here. Maybe one that says finish. But I haven't done it, so let's go for this for now. There's one more option here, and that is to do the update of parameter values only on your selection from the model. If I close this for a moment, and maybe select this chair right here. When I go to RV room link again and run this, I can go down to the parameter links list, make another one. And here, just choose only the elements I selected before running this app. Now I can see these are parameters that I have from this single chair right there. Of course, you can also like more than one item. In that case, you will have in here all the parameter names from all of these items you have selected. For now, we have just one. So how about we say mark? And I can choose room number from here. So that's what I can do this time for step number two. Step number three is simply to check and confirm the options you want to use during room data synchronization. The first one here relates to doors and windows. As you know, doors and windows have two room location points, not just one. So here you can select if RV room link should use the from room point or the to room point when it does the room detection. Moving on, the next option here is to say what kind of value RV room link should assign to the parameters here. In a case that no room was found for a particular element. In here, I just say room not found. But you can, of course, change this to any other text that you like. Maybe not found like this for simplicity. The next option up here is where we can choose if we want to use guest points for any element with our room calculation points enabled. If I untick this, that means I want to manually enable and control the location of these calculation points, maybe in each of the family. That can take me a lot of time. So the easier way I normally use is this, enable this box. And by doing this, RV Room Link will automatically create the room calculation points on the fly for me and use those points to detect rooms where possible. Of course, these points, they are only temporary, so nothing will be changed in your model. No families will be edited whatsoever. Next step, I can also specify the room guest directions. These are the directions that RV Room Link will try to move the temporary location points slightly. Just so you know, sometimes if you have rooms sitting right next to an element, it will be useful to just temporarily move the element slightly to detect that room instead of missing out the room information altogether for that object. Here we have different directions to do that. There are six of them, up, down, left, right, and front, back. So let's say you are trying to detect rooms for MEP elements on the ceiling. Then maybe it makes sense to disable all the directions here except from down because you know the rooms will always be below the elements you want to update. In this case here, yeah, I want to leave them all ticked for the max number of rooms detected. And finally, we have the last option, which is the distance by which RV Room Link will try to temporarily move these room calculation points around to find as many rooms as possible from your Revit links. For now, it's 100 millimeters, but you can be free to increase it, maybe to something like 200. But keep in mind, if you take this value up too high, at some point, your elements may be considered inside some rooms that are too far away, and that can give you inaccurate room data report. So maybe it's worth doing a few experiments on this value before choosing your favorite number. With all this setup, I can now click on sync room data here. 
And here we go. That was done super quickly. And I have back to me now a nice little report of all the updated elements and their parameters. This also shows me where RV room link couldn't detect rooms for a particular element. For example, this model line object doesn't have the commons parameter. So even though a room was detected, the app couldn't drive the room data to any parameter. If I scroll down to here, however, for this furniture object here, everything was fine. The room was detected and the data was returned to this commons parameter. If I now go down to here, I have more of the same, so I can be free to check them if I want to. Actually, to help with your checking process, RV Room Link also let you select and see the element in this view. So for example, I want to check on this dining chair right there. I can simply select it here on the table and click on Show Elements. And now I'm taken straight to where it is. That's my chair. If I now want to select this kitchen island, I can also do Show Elements. And I can also select it like this. And here I can check it that yes, this is the right object in the right room. Because I see now custom room name is now kitchen dining, room number is now 101, and even the room area has been written to the commons parameter just like I want it. If I want to export this table here for someone else, I can do export to CSV or to Excel files. Let's now see the result in our schedule at the beginning of the tutorial. When I go back to this schedule view, I can see only two items have their room data assigned. And this is because of my setup. Let's check the setup here. So I can see I only want to do custom room name and custom room number for case work objects. Let's do the same for all the other categories as well. So let's change these to all categories and run this again. Here we go. So now you can see all of that has been filled in. Now these are items in the living room and there was a situation there. Let me show you now. If I go to this plan view and do a section like this, go to the view as well, uncrop it and then turn on the room category from here. I can see now the room doesn't have the right extent it has an offset above the floor level of this room here. So you can either change the room extent to fix it in the link, reload it, and then rerun RV room link to pick up the room data from these elements here. Or I can just go back to here, run RV room link again, but this time increase the tolerance value to maybe 500. And try this. Now you can see I have the living room name here and number for some objects. Now, as a bonus tip, let's say I want to reuse all this setup on another model or even on this same model, but later in this project, maybe when the links have been updated and I want to refresh this table here, how can I save the configuration here? Well, that's actually very easy. I can just go down to here and click on save settings and then save whatever I have set up here into a file. Let's call this one my settings. And now with that saved, I can even mess things up in here, maybe change a few values and delete a few items, untick a few boxes, nothing here, like so. When the time comes and I want to recall my save settings again, I can simply go to load settings and then select the file that I saved previously. So that's my settings here. Let's open it. And you can see now all of my setups have been restored ready to be used one more time. So there we have it. That's a quick overview of how to use RV Room Link to import room data from your Revit links to elements in your live model. If you want to try RV Room Link completely for free, just go down to this video description and use the link there to get your free copy today. If you have any questions on this app, feel free to let us know and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.